All right, before I start this video, I would like to give a NSFW slash uh, TW content warning because this video could get a little sad at times, could get a little triggering. I just figure I should mention it because I want to get the word out there, but I also don't want to needlessly trigger anyone. So with that said, you have your content warning. Let's get to the thing. So this is my struggles with depression. When I was growing up, I sorta had like two stages, three stages of my life, right? Like I sorta had that really young kid stage where I wasn't specifically like depressed or anything. I just didn't really fit in. Like when I was like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it just really ended at me not fitting in. Like, there wasn't really anything aside from a little abuse and family issues and dysfunction going on with my family that wasn't all too pleasant. Uh, prefer not to talk about that very much, at least in this video, but just know that it was mostly limited to social factors. And as I grew up, it started sorta becoming worse because it seemed that as I grew up, People kind of treated me a bit more harshly, for lack of a better term. Like, as in, when I was younger, like, first, fifth grade, I was weird, but, like, I still found people to hang with. I still found solace. But kind of after, like, sixth or seventh grade, I hadn't really found many other people to actually become friends with and just talk to on a casual basis. Everyone just sort of was, like bullying me and treating me bad and after a while i started turning more towards video games now keep in mind i have been practically a gamer girl since birth i've always played video games i've always had an interest in them from my very first time picking up a controller to play sneakers on original xbox i've liked video games but anyway i'm not gonna go off on a side tangent just know that I have used video games to cope with this, and that has been my main method of coping ever since. So when I was like around uh, maybe 13, my depression started shifting more from purely social factors to sort of feeling helplessness, because as I grew older and the move to Texas happened, yes, there was some good. I, I found more friends, I managed to fit in a little better, but at the same time, there were also family bit of family issues kind of peeking through and it made me a bit more worried, made my life more complicated, caused me to become more depressed. And after my junior year of high school, things started sort of becoming a downward spiral because that's when I realized that I had gender dysphoria and most of the bad shit in my life wasn't just me entirely not fitting in. Like that wasn't entirely the cause of it. It was that I had no confidence and didn't feel comfortable in my body and that was an underlying factor. So when I discovered gender dysphoria at first, I felt helpless and I was unable to get HRT. I was unable to medically transition and there wasn't really many people willing to help me with it because in an unfortunate twist of events, I had a psychotic break due to the fact that I was basically being mistreated by school officials who kept using my dead name after I sent out an email for them to stop using my dead name. Combine that with my friends being threatening and disrespectful about it, and yeah, you have a recipe for disaster. That definitely worsened my depression. Like, if there's one thing that could have helped me now to maybe not get into this sort of depressive, vicious cycle, it would have been to have people respect me from the beginning like they should have, but, you know, I can't change the past, no one did. But it only worsened over time because, yeah, falsely diagnosed with schizophrenia, didn't get any sort of help with transgender stuff. They thought that my gender dysphoria was being caused by schizophrenia, and it caused me to feel helpless. The dysphoria I used to feel back then every day was immeasurable. I hated random erections, I hated the length of my equipment in general, and there was a lot of other stuff too, like me being flat chested, which I still struggle with, but back then it ate me up more, because back then I wasn't on HRT, so I knew that I would never grow breasts basically, like it was biologically impossible for me to start growing breasts 
from the beginning, and it's hard to describe how much that actually stung. Like, I can barely put it into words, to be fully honest with you, but just know that I would have taken a rusty nail shoved up my heel over dysphoria any goddamn day. <laughs> I'm not lying. So, it only worsened. Come 2017, I was on a bunch of psych meds for a condition that I actually turned out later not at all to have. And if you're wondering, the psych meds did not help with depression at all. I had taken an antidepressant for a sort, short run-in. Like, it kinda helped, but at the same time, it also kinda, you know, it, it wasn't the greatest improvement. Like, it wasn't making me feel totally happy, right? Like, it still couldn't fix the underlying causes of my depression to, like, being rejected, having dysphoria, etc. So come 2018, my depression further goes down the spiral, and I start feeling even worse because Here's the thing, now aside from not having dysphoria treatment and aside from, you know, rejection and stuff, now it, it gets more bad because I'm, I'm 18 so people aren't obligated to care for me anymore and that weight is a lot to bear. That's why when kids are like, oh, I want to grow up so my parents can't boss me around, kind of look at them and I'm like, Really? You, you want that? You want to not have anyone c care for you out of requirement anymore? And have true unconditional love? Okay. And that was a huge blow to me, because I felt- I, f I was 18, and I felt helpless, and I knew that no one could help me, because let's say I was 17, and the doctors were more competent, and they were just like, okay, let's give her treatment for gender dysphoria. Then if I'm 17 years old, you know, I don't really have to worry about too much. I'd have to tell the doctors myself what's going on, because obviously my parents wouldn't be able to read my mind, but I wouldn't have to worry about paying for it. I wouldn't have to worry about this other stuff, you know. I could go do, do all these things without having to have it all on my shoulders all the time. And that responsibility was a huge blow to me. And that was another main cause to it, too so it kind of compounded and made me feel worse. Also, the fact that when I had moved, I hadn't actually graduated from high school. I left high school in the middle of October. I pretty much wasn't back after October because alternative school mistreatment, I was like, I'm not going back. I am absolutely not going back there. It is one of the worst experiences I've ever had, and they too were transphobic, and they treated me horribly. And that wasn't as you can imagine, very great. So I had no school, I had no job, I had nothing regular to do, and I felt helpless. Yeah. And since then, my depression has sort of spiraled. And of course, other smaller factors have also compounded that. Like my Facebook getting shut down, my YouTube getting shut down a while back. Both of these happened in 2018, by the way. My YouTube got shut down in like the middle of July. Coincidentally, right after I got restricted from OS. Yeah, really weird timing, right? Facebook got shut down, my Twitter got disabled because I was changing the date, and I changed it to my actual birth date, and Twitter was like, whoop de doo you were 12 years old when you created this account, so this account is now locked, and I haven't gotten that back. So I basically lost free social networks, and aside from my YouTube getting shut down, my Google account also got terminated. Put it lightly, it did not make me very happy, because that old channel... I had over 1,000 videos, I had over 2,000 subs, and I had been building that channel up since 2009, before I had even hit puberty, before I was even in middle school, I was working on that channel, before I could even beat Calaris on Cameo, I was working on that channel, it was basically like growing an apple tree, only for that apple tree to be hacksawed down, it was a crushing defeat, that all has basically added up, and I've been kind of stuck in a vicious cycle ever since. And remember what I said about the whole, like, helpless thing too? Yeah, that still applies, because here's the thing. When I was younger, like, I could just go to a psychiatrist and tell honestly how I'm feeling right now. I am feeling depressed. I am feeling like shit. Can you possibly try an SSRI with me? And they'd put me on an SSRI. I wouldn't have to worry about paying for the psychiatrist appointment or paying for the meds, you know? I could just get it all done pretty quickly, right? And I wouldn't have to worry about transportation either, you know? Just wasn't too bad, but now I have to worry about a lot of things. 
I have to worry about transportation. I have to worry about being able to get the psychiatrist to prescribe me meds and actually getting them from the pharmacy. You know, there's a lot more thought that I have to put into it now, basically. And with depression, that isn't really too easy. Now that I've explained the downward spiral and how I led to this, let me explain to you exactly how depression feels. Because I'm sure you're wondering, oh yeah, depression is just a choice, you just feel a little sad. Let me explain to you what depression literally feels like for me. So, imagine this. Imagine not feeling sadness, not feeling happiness either. Just a numbness. Not laziness, just a lack of motivation. A lack of all creativity. Just nothing. Basically nothing. That's what I feel like most days, and that's what depression feels like to me. It just feels like I am incapable of feeling emotions most of the time. It sounds cliche as shit, but like, that's how I feel it. Like, I basically just have these feelings of, like, normal people, when they go to make a YouTube video, they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm motivated, let's, let's get this over with. But for me, my brain is just sort of like, like I think of ideas for YouTube videos, and then when I go to sit down to actually make the video, I can't write, I can't do anything, and my brain basically shuts, shuts down and, and, and gives up. It's sort of like I have no motivation or anything. And the lack of emotion part is true too, because there are times when I haven't been able to cry and I just have only been able to feel anger, like not being able to cry or feel happy or anything. I've had to actually feign emotion sometimes to not seem like a robot. Like, for example, there was this one time where one of my friends was about to commit suicide, right? When I was like 16, and I talked them out of it. And I didn't really feel particularly sad. Like, I wasn't crying, I wasn't feeling overly worried, but I still kind of was like, oh shit, you know, I kind of felt like if I don't over-exaggerate my responses, people are gonna think, oh, you just have no emotion, you have no empathy. And the truth is, depression for me, also reduces my ability to feel empathy. Now, how do I know what it feels like without it? Well, because there was a brief point in my life when I was without it. But basically, what it is to me is like an emotional black hole, basically. Imagine nothing. Imagine an abyss. Th that's what it feels like to me. Literally an abyss. Just no motivation to do anything. Uh, getting stuck on things. And it's not something I can push through either, because every time I've pushed through it, I have felt worse. Like, problem is, like, if I'm depressed and I'm like, oh, I need to clean my room, like, if I force myself to do it, like, I'm gonna feel like absolute shit after, and it, it always happens with me, invariably. And that's just how it works, because it, it's, it's weird, and I don't know how else to describe it, except for the fact that the reason why this affects my YouTube should be obvious, but for those that don't see it, let me explain it real quick. So, if I'm depressed, and, like, severely depressed, and I had to force myself to make videos every day, not only would the videos probably not be very good quality, but they would also probably be, you know, rushed to shit, because that's kind of how it used to work back then. When I was in school in my junior year, and even a small portion of my senior year, when I was feeling like shit, like I could do work, but I could never actually reach my true potential. Like if I had to do schoolwork, I, I did it, but never did I reach the point where I could do something to my fullest and be like truly proud of it. Never isn't entirely correct, it's just most of the time, like 99.9% .9 of the time, I never really reached my true potential. There has been very little times in like the past five years where I've felt legitimate true motivation to do something and that's how it affects me. I've tried different things, I've tried like self-talk and self-care and stuff but the thing is I, I also worry too much because it, it doesn't just end at depression for me, I also have anxiety and as I said before with the compounding you know it doesn't stop with just depression it's sort of other issues affecting it too. That's basically how depression works for me and honestly it's not it's not pretty to experience it and if I could do something about it I fucking would if I I would literally give anything right now to be able to actually feel emotion like I used to like to see something sad and just be able
able to actually cry and actually feel like I can do stuff instead of having to force my brain to cry because I can't naturally experience emotion. It's just not a good thing to have to experience and having to not have emotion and not have motivation is not an easy thing to deal with and I really hope that one day it probably in the near future that I can actually you know get the funds get it all worked out and actually get treatment for it because this video is not meant to be a thing for hug boxing this video is meant to be a thing to actually let people know how this shit works because there's a bunch of people out there who think they're being clever and edgy by saying that depression is just feeling a little sad and oh because you feel a little sad you're depressed no that's not how it works depression isn't feeling sad Depression is a lack of emotion, a lack of all emotions but sadness and anger, and even then, sometimes those emotions don't come. So literally depression is mostly anger if you experience any, any emotion at all. And with that said, I hope this puts some of it into perspective, and I'd like to say that try not to get into a similar situation that I've gotten into. If if you're f not feeling confident in yourself, if you have dysphoria and it's causing you depression, I, I advise you to get it sorted out because I didn't treat my dysphoria and it sort of sort of led me down a downward spiral after not treating it and that's a problem. And if, if you don't fit in, like, times have changed since I was growing up. Like, people are relatively way more tolerant now compared to when I was growing up. So chances are most of the people watching this video, especially if you're younger or in a different area, you probably they won't understand the whole kids were making fun of me for playing Final Fantasy thing. But if they do, I urge you to seek out different things. Like, you don't even have to use your voice. You don't even have to use your real name. Like, th there's no risk involved. If you like playing Final Fantasy, go into a turn-based RPGs group. And if you find yourself not being able to experience emotion, unless you force your brain to experience emotion, th that's not normal. That's, that's not a good thing. That's a bad thing and you should probably talk to a therapist about it. But anyway, that's all I have to say for now, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it maybe sheds some light on this whole situation, why I haven't been uploading, and all that.